Dr. William Lee about food uh, and food is medicine. Uh, he's an incredible guy who has done so much work in the field of food is medicine. He's written an incredible book called Eat to Beat Disease, uh, which is pretty awesome. You should definitely get a copy. He's been on the podcast about that. But today, we're going to talk to him about the ways in which we have to bolster our five health defense systems. It's very much like functional medicine. What are the things we have to do to actually fix the things that, that are not working well that keep us healthy and well? And the best way to do it is food. And I wrote about this in the vegan diet, and it's so it's super, super uh, granular about how different foods affect different systems in the body and regulate our health in all sorts of different ways. So let me see if I can get William on and we can talk to him and uh, see if he can get on. We had trouble yesterday, but let's see how it goes. And I'm going to introduce him and then uh, share a little bit about his bio. Sorry, it's a little bumpy and noisy, but this is what we got. <laughs> can you hear me okay? Hopefully. Okay. All right. Um, so let's see while he tries to come on. Let's see. So I just introduced him a little bit by telling you about his bio. He basically is this amazing physician who's uh, he's kind of like a medical detective. He's a research scientist, uh, speaker, uh, author of the New York Times bestselling book, Eat to Beat Disease, which I love, The New Science of How Your Body Can Heal Itself. He's known for leading the Angiogenesis Foundation, which is his nonprofit that uh, is really driven around the science of blood vessels, which turned out to be so important for understanding over 70 different diseases, and his work has had influence on all of those, including cancer, diabetes, blindness, heart disease, obesity, and his TED Talk, uh, Can We Eat to Starve Cancer? Had 11 million views, which is a lot of views. Uh, and he's also been on lots of media, Good Morning America, CNN, MSNBC, NPR, Voice of America, and Atlantic Time Magazine, New York Times, all the good stuff. Uh, he's authored over 100 scientific papers, including ones on COVID, which he's been working on recently. We can talk a little bit about that, hopefully. And he's published the New England Journal of Medicine, Lancet, top journals. Uh, and he's on the faculty of Harvard, uh, Tufts, and Dartmouth. Uh, not so bad. Okay, so where are you, Dr. Lee? Come on, let's go. Uh, here we go. We tried this yesterday. It didn't work. I don't know why we had tech issues. Maybe our phones don't like each other. But uh, he's just a great guy. And, you know, the, I'm super... Oh, We did it! Yay! Yay! Hey, okay. how you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm sitting in the back of the car. I am going to Sardinia uh, to find out what they eat because they have the longest-lived males in the entire world who live over 100 years old by eating their Bronze Age sheep cheese, their special wine grown in rough conditions with extra polyphenols, and uh, uh, they forage a lot of their wild greens and eat goat's milk that feeds on all kinds of plants that gives them all these beneficial biochemical properties. So they have like a lot of secrets that we don't find out. The work you're doing around food and medicine, it's like, wow, how does it actually work? So how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing really well. It looks like we're both in action. I'm in my kitchen here. I want to show you. Uh, I, I've got stuff that I'm actually working on. This is a strawberry papaya. Oh, I love those I got, strawberry papayas. Uh, I got some kiwi going on here. And oh, yeah. um, I'm actually working on some research to um, uh, look at figs because it turns out that the seeds of figs are an incredible source of dietary fiber. And you can't avoid eating the seeds because they're, they're actually in, in nested in the flesh. Anyway, yes. so I'm, I'm, I'm in my kitchen. That's great. Take them out of the bathroom eat figs. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. So, uh, you know, William, we've known each other a long time, and we both are very uh, – passionate about the whole space of food as medicine and understand that you know, what we learned in medical school really isn't the whole story. And in your book, you, you really wrote about uh, a framework for thinking about health as opposed to just disease by looking at the five underlying health systems that have to work in order for you to be healthy. You have these five health defense systems. There you go. Uh, and so the, the, this is not what we learned in medical school, but it is actually what we do in functional medicine, which is look at the body as this ecosystem and, and when things are in balance we're healthy when they're out of balance we're not healthy and so i would love you to sort of talk about these five health defense systems and what they are why they matter and how food affects them yeah well i mean mark you and i share the common bonds not only of food and functional medicine but we're you know we're real doctors and real doctors are uh, uh cut from the bolt of cloth of pharmaceuticals 
And yeah. my, uh, how I got into the, how I really discovered the power of the five health defense systems is because I had done a uh, part of my career in biotechnology and we were working to actually develop drugs that were aimed at tackling uh, five, five systems, immune system, immunotherapy, um, uh, uh, DNA with gene therapy, microbiome, of course, is still an emerging field, um, stem cell therapy, regenerative medicine I've been involved with, and of course, angiogenesis is my wheelhouse, blood vessels. Yeah. We can grow blood vessels or get rid of blood vessels. That's all biotechnology. And what I realized is that the same systems that we were developing heat-seeking missiles that were expensive, had side effects, took a decade, and actually most physicians don't know how to use, Mother yeah. Nature beat us to the punch by actually inserting a lot of these natural chemicals that are in the foods that we not only eat, but we love to eat. Yes, and that's yes. the best news. Yeah, it's true. We can eat our medicine, right? Uh, that's right. You know, I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're Chinese, and uh, I don't even know if you speak Mandarin, but I, but I learned oh, Mandarin. <laughs> okay, we can talk in Chinese, but I think people would lose us. <laughs> but that's, but a, that's is, a different that's a different social platform. <laughs> but you know, in, in Chinese, what you say when you when you take your medicine, we say we well, take our medicine. They say chiryao, which means you eat your medicine. It's literally the language they use talking about medicine, which is not I'm going to take a pill. It's I'm going to eat my medicine. Right. Right. So right. They, they, and, they, and you know, I, I wrote this article once called "Food is Pharmacology." And, uh, and it was after I had a meal in Hong Kong where every single thing on the menu was like the sea cucumber and all these weird foods. <laughs> we don't really eat in this country, but they're, they're all these medicinal dishes, and they're very well aware of it. It's not like just, oh, we don't really know what this is, but they, they have understood for centuries how to use food as their drug. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that I – remember in my travels to China that was now uh, commonplace you can get in the grocery store goji berries, which goji of course berries. have been used uh, for medicinal purposes for years and in cooking for medicinal yeah. foods. So, you know, I think that we're rediscovering, the good news is we're discovering using real science um, uh, and using real scientific tools, things that can actually um, help our body do its own job. And I'll, I'll show you the, the most recent thing that I've been working on as well because um, I, I just happen to have it at my table here. Um, we were, by the way, for everybody watching, Mark and I were going to try to do this yesterday, and technology thwarted us. And that's the great thing about food. It's very hard for food to thwart you. Technology can do it. Food yeah. can't. So look what I got here. I got a cantaloupe. cantaloupe. All right? Well, it turns out that cantaloupes actually have enough of a antioxidant to lower inflammation in your body, the tumor necrosis factor alpha, after strenuous exercise. And here I am watching the Olympics and all wow. these superstars. So they've actually studied this by looking at the pulp of cantaloupe and lowering TNF alpha, circulating levels of an inflammatory cytokine. That's so, amazing. you know, this is sort of like the gift that keeps on giving because I love cantaloupe and it's summertime. So, so wait, tell me about these five defense systems. What, what are they? You, you okay. sort of mentioned them briefly, but let, let's talk about maybe each one separately and then give me one or two examples of a food that influences them, both for good or bad. <laughs> number, this is like David Letterman. Number one, but I'll start at number one. Number one Stop. is angiogeni angiogenesis, blood vessels uh, bring uh, oxygen and nutrients. Whatever we eat, our blood vessels bring to all of our cells. Super important. Well, we need to grow blood vessels to heal our tissues after a cut or a wound or in diabetes, for example. Um, you can actually eat um, foods that contain fruit peel like a organic apple or a peach that you wouldn't be afraid of pesticides, or you might actually um, have uh, dried fruit like in a trail mix, which, you know, is great for hiking in Sardinia, by the way. <laughs> oh, really? So, um, up the cliffs. <laughs> and then, th then if I'm you just have- gonna, I'm just gonna stop and eat some of that Bronze Age sheep cheese and have some <laughs> of that wine on my way. <laughs> yeah, um, and then if you wanted to get rid of extra blood vessels, your body can mow those extra blood vessels down, but Green tea um, can also, as an example, or, or tomatoes with the lycopene, can, and, or even soybeans can help mow down those extra blood vessels that might feed cancer. So health defense system, number one, helps us heal and prevents cancer. Number two is our stem cells, which um, we're all formed of stem cells. And the amazing thing is that cacao, dark chocolate, actually has been shown to mobilize stem cells out of our bone marrow and oh, help wow. us improve our circulation. 
Um, so this has been clinical studies. I'm talking all about clinical studies. Oh, good. So, so a huge chocolate I had this. I was good for my stem cells. I like the that. Darker, <laughs> the darker, the better, 80% or more. Okay, um, right. And by the way, like, you know, what I'm looking for now, and I actually helped to develop with my friend Katrina Markov at Boj, is a all plant, vegan, no added sugar, dark chocolate bar, 80% or higher. Those are, um, that's the kind of chocolate that, you know, I think that people should go for. And I actually bought my own cacao pods, seed pods, to try to play, play with the, making cacao powder myself at home. So, you know, this is, uh, you know, the, the, not, not the age of necessity. This is the age of opportunity it, it, to yeah. use science to figure out how to help ourselves. And there's stuff that we don't even know, like, like uh, I, before you go into the other health system, I was in, I was in um, Hawaii with Laird Hamilton, who's a world champion surfer, and yep. hanging out. And he, and he, he had these, all these cacao trees on his, on his property. And he's like, grab one, he sliced it in half, and he's like, show us the, th the seeds, which have to be prepared in a certain way. But then he's like, you start eating the pulp. There's all this pulp yeah. that tastes like yeah. chocolate. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that gets thrown away. Well, like, I'm sure that's got a lot of good stuff in it. Or, or well, the when you I would coffee, the same thing. But, the, the coffee bean, like the, the red stuff on the coffee bean, that might yeah. be used as full of antioxidants. Yeah, the coffee bean doesn't look like what's in here. No, no. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful green bean, green and red bean. But you know, the, did you eat the, the, the fruit, um, the layer of fruit around the seed? It tastes like lychee. It's a, it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sweet, it's acidic. True. Yeah, so um, anyway, all this stuff for us still to discover that's good for us that we love, Second health defense system. The third one is, of course, our gut bacteria. Our microbiome protects our immune system, uh, helps us heal. It's good for our skin. It helps our metabolism. And also um, helps our brain through the vagus nerve, one of the gigantic nerves, helps our brain uh, produce and release serotonin and dopamine and all these other things that psychiatrists give drugs for. And now there's mood food that we can actually, you know, use to help chill, which I really think is important because oh, we God. don't only need to, work, you know, have those pills that are on uh, that we have to fill the prescription for. Well, we're sort of in the age of anxiety now with COVID. What do we wish we eating to deal with our anxiety? Oh, well, you know what? I'll tell you one of the things that I strongly believe in because it works for me actually is tea. And the two kinds of teas I like to drink are green tea which is also good for my metabolism and my blood sugar and blood lipids uh, and also activates health defenses, including the gut microbiome. But it actually chills me out. Um, uh, and so I feel more relaxed. The blood vessels dilate. I'm more chill. But uh, uh, chrysanthemum and chamomile tea can also have similar types of anti-inflammatory kind of like anxiety lowering. Oh, that's good. Yeah, effects. yeah, yeah. Well, green tea has theanine, which is uh, actually an incredible compound. It's super relaxing. And oh, that's yeah. why all the monks use it before they meditate. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's kind of like getting a massage from the inside. Uh, you know, like, you know like it just kind of chills you out. Um, uh, so the third one is the microbiome. No. Our, our so. DNA is a fourth health defense system. You are in Sardinia with all of that beautiful Mediterranean sunshine, or as the case may be, depending where you are, you might be getting some smoke coming from the wildfires that are going out in southern europe right now um you know your dna could be damaged by ultraviolet radiation or or smoke but the dna will fix itself and so foods like kiwi actually can help your dna fix itself and prompt repair and lower wow, damage wow. which is really awesome one kiwi day is good and it's good source of fiber for the uh, uh, microbiome and then the fifth one of course is your immune system our immune system, which is more powerful than ever. And I love the fact that we're beginning to discover, and I don't know if you saw this uh, study that just came out um, about a week ago, that in a large study in China and, uh, and also in Europe, they looked at people who developed severe COVID and those who were able to dodge the bullet um, tended to eat more, not only fruits and vegetable and plant-based foods, but also coffee. Coffee. So- nice. China so, don't drink much coffee. I know. So it was an interesting, interesting mix of people. I think they're starting to drink more Western type of things. Uh, but yeah, the question a, is what? They have, a, the new, they have is, a new store called Buckstar Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the question is, what is it that is in our food that protects us and shields us from our environment and, and really kind of helps stoke us from the inside out? 
That's what my book, Eat to Beat Disease, is about. That's what I've actually started to teach. You know, during lockdown, I started to kind of dive into kind of the lab and, and the research to figure out new things to actually communicate. And that's why I created an online course and I started doing master classes. And it's really great to get uh, information that people can use out to them right away. Yeah, I'm so excited about this. Your master class is coming up on uh, August 9th at 8 o'clock. It's free. Uh, and you can sign up for his master class, which will learn way more than we're talking about here. It's a 60 minute master class. He's gonna talk about all these health defense systems and understand how they function and share the foods that fix each one. Um, you know, what, what I wanted to ask you also is, you know, as you're talking about these five systems right here, your, your immune system, your microbiome, your, your DNA, uh, your angiogenesis, blood vessel, your microbiome, these are the systems that we have to regulate in order to stay healthy. And, and there's, I think there's a, a other things that they affect for sure. Um, and you're talking about all these incredible foods that, that help upregulate, improve their function, and optimize them. What about the stuff that harms them? What should we be not eating that is causing problems? Because food can heal, but it can also harm. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that it's this is a much more complicated than most people think because it's not about good guys versus black guys, white, bad guys versus good guys, black hats versus white hats. It's really, you know, that old adage that, that the, the dose makes the poison. So if you eat too much of anything, um, uh, it can actually be harmful. So what I always tell people is to follow your body because on an individual basis, if you're not able to tolerate something, that food is probably not for you, even if it's good for other people, even if the research says it's good, because we're actually all so different. That said, we do know that there is health defense assassination that can occur if you eat ultra processed foods, a lot of them. If you eat a lot of added sugar and have a hyperglycemic state, makes you pro-inflammatory and kind of wrecks, turns your metabolism into a train wreck. And I think that, you know, while eating meat and fish and chicken and poultry can all be very good in moderation, if you eat too much of any type of of, of meat or protein, uh, no matter what it is, you can actually also overload your system and tip that balance of that ecosystem, which is what you're talking about. You know, where the health defenses are really kind of a delicate ecosystem. It's a the great barrier reef uh, in our body. And so you don't want to overfish or underfish and you don't want to be putting too many weird species that don't belong uh, in the water. And so it's kind of at first admiring the ecosystem and then taking great care of it, like we should be taking care of our planet. Yeah, so, so basically what you're talking about is that there are, there are categorically foods that are harmful, right? Sugar and processed foods are inflammatory, they screw up your microbiome, they damage your DNA, they mess up your mitochondria. Uh, I don't know what they do to your blood vessels, but it's not good, they cause oxidative stress and inflammation. So most of what Americans are eating, the commodity products, the starch, the sugar, the flour, the refined oils, all that stuff is just driving damage in all these systems. Uh, the good news is you can repair those systems by eating the right foods. And that's really what your book is about, Eat to Beat Disease, it's what your master class is going to be about. And I think it's just it's such a gift that you're sharing this free. I mean, you're so busy, you have so much going on, I don't know how you do it, but it, you're just uh, passionate to get people the information they need to save themselves, which is pretty awesome. Well, and listen, I, I'm like you. You are you are on an expedition, you know, kind of the Indiana Jones of Hell to uh, Sardinia <laughs> to look for the grail, right? I mean, that's basically exactly. where you're off to. And I can't wait to hear from you. I, I hope that maybe, you know, maybe when you're on the mountain someplace, let's get back on an Instagram. Let's talk about. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll um... wait, I think I lost you here. Oh, uh, maybe uh -oh, we're having tech problems. Let's see if he pops back on. Well, I am going to call him for Sardinia for sure because I, I want to hear what he has to say about all the things I'm finding. Uh, mm -mm. Okay, well, I don't know if it's going back. I'm in the car. Maybe it's bad service, but it looks like I'm in service. So hopefully, William, you can hear me and uh, everybody listening. I would definitely, I would definitely, definitely go register for his master class. It's August uh, 9th at 9 p.m. And, uh, and I'll hopefully uh, see you all there. I'm going to join for sure. Maybe I'll, I'll buy you from Sardinia and we'll have some more chats about food and how long is it going to be 100? Uh, I'm pretty pretty excited about all that. You're the best, everybody. So go to uh, the link that's going to be in the bio. I think there'll be a registration link in the bio. You can go to that. I'll make sure the link is in there and you can learn about how to find it. Uh, 
and just go to drwilliamlee.com, drwilliamlee.com, uh, uh, and, and you can learn more about the masterclass there too. But I'll put the link in the bio so you have it, and then and then you can uh, go sign up for the masterclass. Uh, 9 p.m. I guess 9 p.m. Uh, uh, Eastern Standard. Oh, oh, sorry, it's August 9th, 8 p.m. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I uh, hope you all having a great time out there. Stay safe. Uh, be careful and eat to beat disease. Okay.